Hey everybody, Richie Castellano here with Christopher Clark and Andy Escalise. Hey. And we're on tour right now with John Anderson and the Band Geeks. And we wanted to take a moment to talk about our new album with John Anderson, True. So the first track on this record is True Messenger, which is a song that started as a demo between John and Jamie Dunlap. And that was one of the ones that we were immediately drawn to, I think. John has a real knack for making odd meter sound normal you know like not like yeah. totally making it sound smooth and seamless and we really like that there's a very funny phone voice note of chris and i you're singing bass and i'm singing drums <laughs> right. and that's basically how how it's done <laughs> obviously your drums for most of the record for all the record yes. are yamaha what is it uh, live custom. Live custom. Zildjian cymbals. Zildjian cymbals. Evans drum heads. Mm -hmm. Pickford drumsticks. And we recorded this in the basement of my house. I played for almost the entire record, the Rickenbacker 4001. I have a 1974 4001. This is a combination of a bunch of guitars from uh, Andy Graziano, we, we used a $400 Yamaha acoustic 12 string that's on almost every song <laughs> on this record. On this one, he used the, the Yamaha acoustic 12, a few Ernie Ball guitars. I have an Axis, a Music Man Axis. The whole ending solo is in the Axis. Yeah. I think he did... <laughs> that was on the Steve Morse. <laughs> And you, do we use it? It was mostly soft synths, right? Except, except for the Nord lead. Uh, oh, the Nord lead, right? Any conspicuous um, lead synth was the Nord lead three. <laughs> Oh, also the um, that's coming oh, from the that's the, the Kurzweil. Yeah, Kurzweil. Kurzweil PC4. What's mm -hmm. the name of that sound? It's called Magic Embira. Spell it's called M B I R A. I, we were doing a, a Zoom call with John, and I think Chris whipped that sound out, and John yeah. really dug it. So that, good. that was like it. that's it. I added some extensions to this song because I, I knew that it needed a little something else. All the proggy bits at the end and the da -da 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 -da. that was my contribution. <laughs> Not exactly the right notes, but I figured out the idea, what the, the, idea, the rhythm yeah, was, yeah. and then later on I did the I figured out what the, what the line was, and I also tried to see if it was playable on guitar. I didn't really care if it was playable on keyboard. I figured that's his problem. But guitar, <laughs> yes, I, I, I would feel too bad giving Andy Graziano something that's not playable on guitar. <laughs> and then these guys, I said, can you do like a Chick Corea harmonization of that? harmonization Yeah, so of, they, yeah. they did a very fusion-y <laughs> underpinning. Oh, to, to, yeah. oh, to get out, you mean? Oh, yeah, no, no, what, no, what was happening under? Yeah, what the chords are. Of course, there's a great Hammond solo. Dog. <laughs> we tried to put a lot of Hammond in here, and we we knew that you know what Hammond is going to be a big part of this record, and it's going to bring us back to some of the elements of the retro sound. Like we didn't want to make it retro, but we wanted a little bit of that in there. So Rob Kip expertly played the Hammond. There's a great lead in there. Three, four, five, six, seven. And also, uh, I think all of us sang. You didn't get to sing on the record because you were on tour on with uh, Virgil Donati. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Big Shot over here. The very last part of that song with the guitar solo, you have a fun story about uh, working with John with that. Oh, right. That whole ending part was John's idea. He said, let's go grungy. And I said, really? And I, I, was, I was not expecting. He said, yeah, go grungy. And I said, like, like heavy grungy? He said, yeah. And you so, played that so I, Well, first they were like, and he said, yep, that's it. And I said, you know, guitar solo over this is great. But he said, it needs something else. It needs something on top of it. So I have this uh, Persian string ensemble in, uh, in East West. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good library. And um, it, ha it does all the slurs very nicely with, mm -hmm. the, with the... So I think the ending string part is a f one take while I was on Zoom with John and he was singing to me and we were like we that was spontaneous and that stayed it stayed on the record all right the second song shine on <laughs> nice i was trying to overwrite some of these tunes that we were submitting to john and he said listen let me do my thing and i said oh yeah like duh you know like i'm i'm not going to be able to to write John Anderson lyrics, you know. Right. We have John Anderson. So you sent so him a demo that we, just had shine, shine on, on, yeah, and that's and, it. And a couple of little like humming things, and and then he he came back immediately, and that's how I could tell if John likes something is if he immediately sends it back with words on it. You said something to me that was interesting. You said this shouldn't be an opportunity to copy. Yes, you said don't don't think about that. You said think about what they were listening to. Chris Squire liked Sly and the Family Stone. So Absolutely. I thought about Sly and the Family Stone for a second. And then, and then by some weird <coughs> tangent, brain tangent, I got on to my dad and my uncle who played all that dance music in a wedding band. So what would my dad play? You know, what, what, would, what would my uncle play? And when I thought about what my uncle would play, I just improvised in the style of my Uncle Phil. Bonk. And, and I'm like, that's that's my uncle. And I remember we, we were we we did that all together. Yeah. I was sitting behind the drum set just looping that drum beat mm -hmm. and you were just trying different little riffs yeah. and riffs and all of a sudden you came up with that one. We were like, that's it. That's <laughs> the one. And then for something that goes on top of it, I thought I said, okay, so we have my Uncle Phil's bass line down. I said, what would my dad do on top of this? So while that's totally what my I've heard my dad play that on weddings. It was sort of reverse engineered into something not reminiscent of yes, but reminiscent of my upbringing, you know, my my family. And so that's And then John came back and said, Well, we he really liked that sound yeah. in True Messenger. In Bira. In Bira. Yeah, yeah. He no, said, Bira. Let's try to do something with that on this song. So right. now right. that guitar line became a keyboard part. And right. it, and it updated. Not, yeah, updated. Like something else. Yeah, yeah, it was something different. He worked really hard on everything, but um, you know, he, we did maybe seven or eight versions of that, just constantly moving things around. When we were arranging this I said, okay, after the second chorus, guitar solo. And he said, no, drum solo. And he said, yeah, fine with me. And then, and then John uh, would sing the the horn lines over that, horn you know. Lines over that, and then and then we had the yeah. big stop. I forget who came up with that. That might have been John. Well, okay. Or we we kind of there was a, okay. A Andy really set the bar high because there was another song uh, in Make It Right. We Andy added this Beach Boys kind of cascading harmony thing, and once John heard that, he loved the idea and wanted to put it in more songs. So he said, "Let's do the cascade again." Right. You know, shine, shine, shine. Right. So that came from there, and he. And then, and then we said, "So what should we do after that?" And he's like, "Well, have more drum solo yeah, and make yeah. it bigger." John isn't known as an instrumentalist, but John wrote a lot of these instrumental parts. He sang them to us, and, and 
he would say, okay, here's the part. And if we'd play, he was like, no, no, no. He would, he, he, correct us. he would correct us. He, it's like, no, this is the part. And he, he knew exactly what it was. And it was really, really cool to work with someone who just has that clear of a direction for things. And, it, and, it and even, was, you know, even when he, with, at the end of Shine On solo there, the, all those chords climbing up, he would, he would tell Chris, like, you know, do like a sus chord like that. And he's like, no, go down one. Yeah. That one, yeah. Now yeah. go up again. Mm -hmm. Now come down, cool. you know. Right. But he heard it way before I ever, you know, we powered up anything. He heard that, you know, that, that yeah. walk up. And everyone sang on that. China! That's going to have to be good enough. Everyone sang on that, and Amory Everyone sang on that. Amory Nascio, so if you watch our YouTube videos, Amory's the one that originally sang all of our Yes videos on the Band Geek YouTube videos. Shine on! Shine on! Shine on! Shine on! yelling. I feel like I'm just yelling. The third song was actually the first song we worked on. It's Counties and Countries. We worked on this in... A, a year before. Yeah, 2023 we were working on this. We recorded the drums in my parents' basement because that's where we were rehearsing for the we tour. And they up. were already set up and everything was mic'd. Yeah. Other differences. You uh, played the different bass. You I played the green bass on that one. That started with a demo that John sent me. That was a really nice demo, but it was it was mellow. You know, it was um, it had very soft drums and a beautiful string arrangement and uh, woodwinds and acoustic guitar. It was really nice, but it was not really a rock tune. And John said to me, he goes, this needs bigger everything. And this sort of set the precedent for, I'm using your words now, sorry. Yeah. This, sort of, this sort of set the precedent for how we were going to work on the album is I, I sent him a MIDI demo and then we went back and forth a bunch of times. I remember that MIDI demo got sent to all of us a bunch right. of times, and there was a lot of revisions before we sent it to John. I think there were like 11 times we went back and forth, and then mm -hmm. finally John's like, yeah, this sounds great, we're done. I said, no, no, now we have to record it with the real band, just because if I'm just sketching a song out for a rough idea, I, won't, I usually won't care about what it sounds like, it's just right. to get the idea down, but this is the first ever song I sent to John Anderson, and I didn't want him to think I sucked at producing, so <laughs> I really put time into getting good MIDI right. sounds. Right, if, no, if you heard the MIDI demos, you'd be yeah. stunned. In mountains, down through the ocean, the gift of creation, a calling me, calling me, calling me home, for I received it on that day, the gift of love was here to stay. So John said, okay, this, it's done, great. I said, no, 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 no. Now we're going to actually record it with real instruments because there were right. samples for everything. There was yeah. sample bass. You and programmed the drums. Yeah. And well, programmed, I, I mean, you programmed the bass, right? You yeah, didn't even play. I did that because if you wanted a change, it's just a MIDI change, which takes no time to do. Once you start getting audio in there, the, the changes get a little more complicated. I actually recorded that entire thing for video. So I'll drop in some clips of that and you'll see who played what. Why did 
out. And. Yeah. That was awesome. Build Me an Ocean, we just said, Chris, play. Right, yeah. And, and, and he right. improvised Got lucky. this gorgeous introduction yeah. to it that really just leads right into John you know, coming in. It's mm -hmm. really nice. The demos we got from Jimmy Hahn were all very, like, yeah. re they sounded really good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was some parts in the melody yeah. that the vocal uh, might have been accenting something and the... The, the bed, the music bed underneath it wasn't reacting to it. Right. So we kind of took it apart and tried to structure to really follow right. John's vocal, yes. and that may, that meant doing some interesting time changes right. just to support the vocal. It's one of those deceptive ones that sounds simple, mm -hmm. but it's is a lot of interesting stuff going on under the hood, especially with the bass and drum interplay. Yeah. You know, there's lots of yeah weird accents that. Are weird, but they make it sound normal. He's not thinking odd meters. He's just thinking phrases, you know. Like, right. Like he's very ugly. Like you know, Ryan shaped his heart through his working hand. One of my favorite things about this song is also the background vocals. Right. And yeah. I remember me and you were just there, and we, and we just started singing yeah. stuff, and it was like, inside we are. That, that was, that's what needs to be there, and and all the echoes and the pads. It was really. Oh, but you guys have so much. You're you're you're, you're using the force to create background vocals. It's just like <laughs> you you hear it, and it's just kind of like it just happens, and it's and it's, and, it's, and it's nailed. So I played the guitar solo on this, fully expecting to re-record it. To have Andy do it, and then when Andy came in to to re-record it, Andy Graziano, he listened to it. He said, "Eh." <laughs> I thought this was the one on your uh, Variax. Like, you just did it quick. John said, oh, let's do an acoustic solo. I think you're right. And you just picked up your Variax, put it on an acoustic sound, played something, and then he was like, perfect, that's it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, see, we're, we're burnt. That's how, we, <laughs> that's how much I can remember. No, but there's classic guitar, and I'm playing the acoustic, gets the steel string sounding guitar, and then there's the vocals. And isn't this one with the... Yes. Which yes. is Amory again. Yes. She, she did the... Um, he, because John wanted like a choir, a choral sound, right. and the 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 sample just sounded cheese. Right, and, and, and it was too many people. Yeah, yeah. it was too many people. Right. right. Yeah. And so we had Amory come in, and she sang it for real, and it sounded gorgeous. That was just perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're in the dressing room now, giving you the tour <laughs> of the venue. Uh, so the next song was still a friend, and this started from a uh, demo that we made. And John at one point said, hey, can you guys send me unfinished songs? And Andy and I made a bunch of sketches. Just eight, 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 eight bars. Eight bar, 16 of... bar, just riffs, chord progressions, um, little grooves, groove, proggy things. And John sent us back these tracks with singing on them. Like, like you said, this one he sent back right away with vocals. Yeah, he liked this one a lot. So this one he sent back immediately. I liked what John was singing better than what we were playing under what he was singing. Like I said, this like we could do better. So we yeah we, yeah. we had a very simple six eight kind of thing, and he was doing this little twelve eight swing thing. Over right, it. he was swinging over it, and yeah. we weren't swinging. So yeah. we we redid it. You know, this has also a Celtic feel that John brought into the song where we added these kind of, sort of like flutey yeah, he wanted, he wanted, uh, he wanted, yeah he wanted yeah I, I, I brought not over a penny my, whistle but I mean some, something to, yeah. I brought over my uh, frame drum, fr frame drum yeah. and did that there's actually a fun harmony bit in the intro between you and Andy Graziano and to make it a little bit of a callback you're playing your harmony part through an RMI right and so it's like fragile. Yeah, and I'm play and <laughs> Andy played his horny part on a 175. Right, perfect. <laughs> Late in the game, we were just listening to it, and I think 
you or one of you guys said, you have to just go nuts on the bass here. That brings you into a that really gorgeous section, yeah. slide part from from Andy Graziano. And then one of my favorite things that is when we break it all down and it's just John and acoustic guitar. Right. And it's really it's really a nice moment. Most of the guitar sounds and bass sounds came from the Line Six Helix. I think some of the sounds might have come from my VHT preamp, but mm -hmm. I think like ninety five percent of them came from the Helix. I have to open the session to say which yeah. is which. The next song is Make It Right. This is a song that uh, started as a demo from John and Jonathan Elias, and I really liked it, and it was, the demo was different. It wasn't exactly the same as this. I kind of like reorganized a few things and sent it back to John. I said, is, do you like where I'm going with this? And he said, yep, keep, keep doing it, keep doing it. So um, it was basically what I was given from John and Jonathan Elias, just Move some things around and wrote and a couple things here or there. Andy has a great guitar intro on classical guitar. Yeah, I just said and to Andy, go nuts. Do something <laughs> that's you, right? And like, what's something you like to do? Not something that you're copying somebody else. Like, what's something that is quintessentially Andy Graziano? Yeah. And, and he came up with that uh, tremolo picking thing. That's crazy because I've never really heard anything like that in, in yeah. this music. We had a lot of fun with the production with this song as far as like starting off with oh let's add accordion accordion yeah it. and then that's where the shaker comes in with the other acoustic guitar coming right in. and uh at the end there's a gospel choir why not right <laughs> okay so well but you're, you're skipping over your contribution know, which was right. the uh look how humble he is in the middle he did, does this cascading vocal thing gotta make it right, right, right. And then, and that was totally, yeah. and if, if you get a chance, listen to Andy's record, Endless Sunset, because there's a lot of that Beach Boy influence on there, and we brought that in, and John loved that, and that sort of became a hallmark of the album, is that we had to put stuff like that retroactively into yeah. the songs, because he's yeah. like, it came he goes, like, a, we through, like a through line. Through yeah, he's, he's like, we need more of that yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Oh, and then right after that, that's a fun thing that happens, is that after we build that up, it goes back down to the... Soft yeah, quiet solo. Part of the guitar solo, and I'm brushes. actually playing a different drum set with brushes. Yeah, yeah. So and then we build back up, and then we have a gospel choir. At yeah, the so end. the gospel choir is all of us singing multiple parts, quadrupled, and then Anne Marie singing a bunch of parts, and then I, I told her I was like, you know what, do like. Just go for it. Like, just just gun it. Just you know? go take it to church. Go yeah, yeah, away, just do it. And, the top. <laughs> John, he kind of knew that he wanted to go seamlessly into realization, so they're in the same key. After some back and forth, they were, they were in the same key. This one, I think, is the closest to uh, the Jimmy Hahn demo, because right. uh, the Jimmy Hahn demo was very well produced, had a lot of great guitars on it, and we we pretty much copped the guitar parts yeah. from Jimmy yeah. and then um, but added a few of our own things like we added. the the Hammond work and the piano work is, is yeah. great for, from you and Rob yeah. and you have a like a little little sec a little solo spot <laughs> there and yeah and it, it really is nice. And, and then you and I added a different feel to it. You know we were some more percussion we, and then added a drum set. Drum set which and wasn't really in the original demo. Yeah no drum set in the original so that was all him and I think with that one I just said just play, yeah. right? And he just played for like 15 minutes and then we cut it up. Cause we, we, mm -hmm. did, we weren't sure what we wanted to do with the arrangement. I said, just play, lock in with the click and come up with some fun things. And, and we built it exactly. like that. Yeah. And then I, my first time ever, played a fretless bass, which was an interesting learning curve. I borrowed a Dean fretless bass from my uncle and played with the pick and just said, okay, Let's, what, what would Tony Levin play on this? Right. You know, that, that being the, yeah. you know, the idea. And 
Also, lots of fun background vocals on this. I know John wanted these songs to go into each other, and but I thought, wouldn't it be cool if this song had a callback to make it right, if they're connected? So that's when I did the, oh, let this be Eden, the, but the real low, uh, what, what we end up calling the Lion King vo vocals. <laughs> um, and he loved that, and yeah. so we ended up putting much Perfect. more, much more of that in there. So they're really connected. Yeah, in so many it's, ways. It's, 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 it's you know, it's unified. So once upon a dream started with a three-minute demo from John and Jonathan Elias, and I, I think this is the first thing I really latched onto uh, because John was singing a mantra, and I thought that was cool. The original demo is actually in the track. In the middle, the, the quiet part, going, it's enough to seek around looking for it. That's the original demo that we just played on top of. So we just dropped it in yeah. and added some guitar and additional keyboards on top of that. Obviously, the song's not three minutes anymore. I just asked John, I said, look, I really like this song, Once Upon a Dream. Uh, can I go nuts with this and make it epic. And then John replied, epic is the new art form, which I yeah. thought was the coolest thing anyone's ever said to me. The three of us just started, you know, chiseling away at this and mm -hmm. adding extensions. On, and I had this sort of, uh, let's get aggressive. <laughs> out to everyone everywhere we see the signs of the coming weather we realize everything is possible everything possible last year on the tour we did gates of delirium you know uh choose every night's gonna change to the floor and and every time he would sing like that i go oh man that's so cool so i said what can we do to get john to sing like that in the record so i said john can you like, you know how you sang Gates of Delirium? Can you sing it like that? And he goes, what do you mean? I was like, you know, like, with a little rasp. And he goes, uh, I'll call you back. I'll get back to you. And then, uh, like, 15 minutes later, I got an email from him saying, I found my growl. And he had a whole new version of the song, and it was amazing. I'm like, yeah. What's cool about that is he goes from the growl to really sweet singing with the, Come on, sister, magic that changes you. And... There's something about hearing John and an acoustic guitar that's magic, and you know you got to put it in there. It's got it's got to be on on a John Anderson record. Right, just so satisfying. It's just like... As long as the song is, there were so many little edits here and there from all of us. It was just like, oh, we need two more bars here. We need one bar less yeah. over here. And like I'm, and I'm not feeling it. I think we need we need like a breath, like right here, just no band here for one bar and bring yeah. this in. And yeah. it was it was it it was so much work spent just on that arrangement, just like right. Said, there's just no little bars here and there. Oh yeah, there, there's one bar I remember in particular. I I think that we were just agonizing over because it, it just seemed like we were just like. Like it was run on sentence. He's like, yeah, post. and it ended up being enough. Well, you're, yeah, well, that we we fought for every bar amongst yeah. ourselves, yes. and sometimes with John. I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest. You know, that's hey, that's the creative process. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you have to you have to have an idea, and you have to be able to defend your idea. And if someone doesn't like your idea, you have to be willing to fight them to the right. death. That's that's, <laughs> it. that's, that's just but, it. No, it, yeah, it, but, um, yeah, that's but the works. song that's so lengthy, you need these little pockets of little down and up and down and up, and 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 you can't just go eight bars, eight bars, eight bars, eight. Yeah, bars. sometimes yeah. you need to throw in three bars here right. and two bars here, and I feel like that's the when people <clears throat> see, oh, this is eighteen minutes, this is 50, you know all these long songs that it's not just five three-minute songs smashed together. No, it's you one know? song. It's yeah. one, it it is right. one song, more of a classical suite or whatever. Yeah, yeah. more like a, kind of a, like their take on like, you know, sonata form. I love the Chris Clark freakout, the arpeggiated freakout. I mean, you said 
you know, the only thing worse than having one chord to solo over is having two chords to solo over. Right. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's Alan Holzwitz's quote. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, hey. but, but I, I, I said, no, it's, this, this feels like a two chord dreamy yeah. sort of thing to cut to bring us into the dream section. But um, John really wanted to have some sort of uh, world music singing here. And, you know, I have libraries of that. And it sounds cool. I mean, we had some of that in there. And then finally, I just said, we have a singer. We have a female singer. So right. Amory came in and did some, you know, world-inspired singing. And it's beautiful. Awesome. Very cool. And then to hear them singing off each other. is, Which was sort of like... What was in my head at the, at the beginning yeah. of this whole thing is like I can't wait to hear yeah, like Anne Marie and John singing off Perfect. each other, and then you know, nice classic guitar from Andy. We do that. We get to the organ solo, pipe organ solo. We, well, I thought that was gonna be a synth solo or something. But, Me too. That, but uh, then John said, "No, it's gotta be pipe organ." Right. And uh, we all kind of scratched our heads, but then it sounded it sounds just huge. It sounds. It actually sounds yeah. yeah. And and he recorded that live. While John was directing, and that's the solo that's on the record. I think he's like two or three takes. I know, yeah. And finally he's like, stop, you got it. Okay. Leave it alone. We dance, we fly into a never endless sky. We dance, we sing, we soar along on golden wings. We live, we play, we work to build a brand new day. We love. We cry, we sing a song through heaven's eyes. We made a demo for that, and I don't remember what guitar I used. I think I used my Spirit Carries On, John Petrucci, he looks pretty sick. <laughs> right? And, and I played that guitar solo. I played a guitar solo, and just like, we're gonna replace this later. We had a Zoom call with John, and said, John, we got something we have to show you. And he sat there, like, in silence, listening to the whole thing. And then afterwards he said, that guitar solo, man. I said, no, 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 that's crap. I said, we're going to have yeah, our guy do it. We'll, he's like, we'll focus on it. Yeah, 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 that, that, that's crap. Yeah. I just, a one take thing. He said, do not touch that guitar solo. <laughs> wow. Said, Don't yeah. touch it. Yeah. And then uh, and it's like, called Andy Graziano. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I accidentally yeah. stole yeah. the big solo from you. Right. <laughs> um, Hey, accidentally wowed our John, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but then, but it was nice is after the solo, Andy comes back in with the slide at the end. Yeah. So he gets the last laugh. And I remember and you or organized that, the last ending chord. Oh, with this, the, the, the harmonic changes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that was really the, uh, nice. Oh, yeah. Thanks. I got good lucky. We also kind of, is that, that was also kind of like a, a big yes, credential, satisfying resolution. Plus, the fact kind of like a, a wider historical note that yes was, you know, obviously big Beatles fans. The last song is, it was uh, Thank God. And that was written by John and I believe it was Robin Crow. Yes. Oh, okay. The demo is not like what it ended up being. I don't remember what the demo was like. It sounded nice. Mm-hmm. Oh. It was. But, it, I think it was. It was just very. Uh, there wasn't a percussive instrument. It was, it was kind of very airy. It was just right, yeah. right. And I think uh, John wanted it to have sort of a spiritual kind of uh, feeling to it. Uh, Worship, right? Uh, music. It's such a like simple song. We didn't want to do anything too much to it. Oh, right. That, that's yeah. Well, I also played a five string on this one, right? Um, which is, I, I figured, you know, that's it, no. it should have that kind of extra. Yeah, well, I shouldn't have a depth there. Here. I love what Rob did on the organ here because mm -hmm. like when it comes in, it it gives it that gives it gospel feel. Yeah, you it know? does. It gives it a lift. And then we have a little uh, baroque bass line, like Bach. Yeah. Or Mozart, more like a, of a mock bum, piece. Bum, 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 yeah, bum, bum, it's a mock bum, bum, piece. Bum, 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 right. It was sort of simple yeah. lines intertwining. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Japanese version, there is a bonus track uh, that Andy did the string arrangement for, and there's an extended uh, piano intro from Chris Clark. Oh, right. Here. right. Um, and another thing that is not going to be mentioned on the credits is there's an Atmos mix if you listen to this on Apple Music and you have Atmos equipment or, or AirPods, and that was done at Sound on Sound Studios in New Jersey with engineer, Grammy award winning engineer, Dave Amlin. And he did the mix with Andy and I supervising. More Andy, uh, <laughs> because I think I got so run down finishing this. It was the week after you were mixing. Yeah, I, I, I was sick. 
Yeah. So I remember just being with a mask on, going, Andy, please do this for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was great. And then we got it mastered by our good friend Sam Stoff, who used to be on uh, Blue Oyster Cult's crew, uh, who actually uh, helped engineer the Blue Oyster, Blue Oyster Cult album, The Civil Remains. He's a great, great engineer. I hope you enjoy listening to True from John Anderson and the Band Geeks. Let me know in the comments what you think. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.